Okay. Two weeks ago, we began looking at the story of King Jehoshaphat, who found himself in big trouble one day. And in spite of the fact that his administration had always been doing right, doing good, and helping people, he found himself in trouble. As you may remember, Jehoshaphat was the king of Judah. And while he was trying to build a stronger, safer, more prosperous, more religious Judah, several of his enemies formed an alliance to take it all away from him. We read this the last time we met in 2 Chronicles 20, verses 1 and 2. 2 Chronicles 20, verses 1 and 2. The armies of the Moabites, the Ammonites, and some of the Meunites declared war on Jehoshaphat. Messengers came and told Jehoshaphat, a vast army from Edom is marching against you. And from beyond the Dead Sea, Dead Sea, they are already at Hazazon Tamar. What was Jehoshaphat's response? Well, naturally, he was terrified. Their combined armies were much greater than his, and he didn't know what to do about it. So what exactly did he do? Did he panic? Did he wave the right flag of surrender? No. The Bible says he begged the Lord for guidance. The King James says it this way. He set himself to seek the Lord. As we saw last time, he prayed, he fasted, he listened, he trusted, and he worshiped. Simply put, he surrendered himself to God so that he wouldn't have to surrender to his enemies. And how did God respond to Jehoshaphat's prayers? He said, don't be afraid. Don't be discouraged. This is my fight, not yours. So trust me. So if you're looking at your life today and thinking, oh no, here comes trouble, I want you to know that whatever it is you're facing, God can get you through it. And in the process, he'll bring you closer to him than you've ever been before. And your life will be more blessed than ever because of it. At the end of this story, at the end of 2 Chronicles 20, in verse 30, it says, Jehoshaphat's kingdom was at peace, for his God had given him rest on every side. I guess you could say that's the rest of the story, as Paul Harvey used to say. That's what he'll do for you as well. But I want you to realize that I don't think any of this would have happened for Jehoshaphat if he hadn't responded the right way when trouble first appeared on the horizon. Jehoshaphat experienced God's blessing because instead of panicking, instead of giving up, instead of running away, instead of fighting in his own strength, he confronted trouble with the determination to seek the face of God. Now, let's pick up the story where we left off the last time we met. The men of Judah have all come together, and a prophet began to speak to them. Look in 2 Chronicles 20, starting in verse 15. It says, And he said, Listen carefully, all Judah and you inhabitants of Jerusalem and King Jehoshaphat. This is what the Lord says. Do not be afraid or discouraged because of this vast number for the battle is not yours, but God's. Tomorrow, go down against them. You will see them coming up the ascent of Ziz, and you will find them at the end of the valley facing the wilderness of Jeruel. You do not have to fight this battle. Position yourselves, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord. He is with you, Judah and Jerusalem. Do not be afraid or discouraged. Tomorrow, go out to face them, for Yahweh is with you. Did you get all that? He said, this is where your enemy is going to be. And I want you to go to where they are. I want you to take your positions for battle. And then let me do the rest. The whole point of tonight's message is that God will fight your battles for you. You can trust him to give you victory in all areas of life. 
But in order to experience victory, there are certain things that you need to do. First of all, you need to confront your problems face to face. When Jehoshaphat cried out to God for help, God could have said, hey, there's an army gathered against you in the wilderness, but don't worry about it. Just stay where you are. Don't worry about it. Just take it easy because I've got this. It's all taken care of. He could have said that, but he didn't because he very rarely does it that way. Trusting God to solve your problems doesn't mean that you can just ignore your problems or avoid your problems or pretend like they don't exist. No, God wants you to meet your problems face to face. He wants to give you victory in the presence of your enemies. Why is that? Well, I think that primarily it's because he wants you to see how big your enemy really is so that then you can see how great his power really is. Now, think about your problems. What do you need to do in order to confront them? You don't need to fight them in your own strength because God's already promised to fight your battles for you. But you do need to confront them head on. You may not have the wherewithal to solve your health problems or your marital problems or your financial problems, but you can stand up to them. You can take your position, just as God told Jehoshaphat to do, so that the glory of God can be revealed in your life. It's been said again and again that 80% of success is simply showing up. You know what? I think that kind of applies to what we may face as we face our problems. A big percentage of success in facing our difficulties can be attributed to having the courage to face them. When you're willing to stand up to the enemy face to face, you unleash the power of God in your life. So if you're saying, here comes trouble, the answer is not to run, the answer is to face it. Here's the next thing I want you to notice. You need to confront your problems face to face. And then secondly, you need to take action right away. Let's know what God said to Jehoshaphat. Look at verse 16 and 17 again. It says, tomorrow go down against them. You will see them coming up the ascent of Ziz, and you will find them at the end of the valley facing the wilderness of Jeruel. You do not have to fight this battle. Position yourselves, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord. He is with you, Judah and Jerusalem. Do not be afraid or discouraged. Tomorrow, go out to face them, for Yahweh is with you. So what did they do? Look at the first part of verse 20. It says, in the morning, they got up early, and they went out to the wilderness of Tekoa. In other words, they moved as soon as it was possible to move. They didn't put it off. You know, there are, there are a lot of times when we're up against problems and we know we have to confront them face to face, but we try to put it off as long as possible. Author H. Jackson Brown, who wrote Life's Little Instruction Book, said, where there is a hill to climb... Don't think that waiting will make it any smaller. We know that's true, but it always doesn't always stop us from waiting a little while anyway. Steve Mariucci, who uh, uh, was a coach for the San Francisco 49ers. I'm not a sports guy. I assume that's how you pronounce his name. Um, but he, he was actually quoted as saying, I never wear a watch because I always know it's now. And now is when you should do it. So now is when you need to face your problems. Now is when you need to make your life what it needs to be. Now is when you can begin to experience God's power in your life. Today, you can begin taking steps to move your problems out of the way. Even if they're tiny little baby steps, 
even if they seem laughably insignificant, you can begin taking these steps. And I can promise you two things. God will notice, and he'll show up in your life. There are too many times when we're looking at this vast army that's before us, and we think, I can't do everything to solve this problem right now, so I'll just do nothing at all. I can't solve this problem today, so I'm just going to put it off for a little while longer. We develop a what's-the-use attitude. We think, what good will it do if I eat a salad today instead of a pizza? Is one salad going to make me healthy? Or we think, what good will it do if I take my wife out for a romantic dinner? Is one evening out going to solve our marriage problems? Or we think, what good will it do if I bet $10 in savings? I certainly can't retire on $10. And we think, I'll confront these problems when I have a better chance at solving them. You know what? If Jehoshaphat and his army had believed this lie, they never would have gone into the wilderness of Tekoa. They never would have faced their enemies, and they never would have experienced victory. God told the army to move into position right away. He said, I'll be with you. I'll protect you. I'll fight for you. I'll give you victory. But you need to take action right away so that I can begin to bless you. And I believe God's telling that to us as well, that we need to be willing to face up to our problems. We need to be willing to do it now. And the third thing that you need to do is to chart your course with praise. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians, or 2 Chronicles 20, verses 21 and 22, then he consulted with the people and appointed some to sing for the Lord and some to praise the splendor of his holiness. And when they went out in the front of the armed forces, they kept singing, give thanks to the Lord for his faithful love endures forever. And then look at what scripture says happened in verse 22. The moment they began their shouts and praises, the Lord set an ambush against the Ammonites the Moabites, and the inhabitants of Mount Seir who came to fight against Judah, and they were defeated. Did you get that? At the very moment they began to sing and shout and give praise, the enemy self-destructed. Two weeks ago, we talked about how praise and worship were an important part of seeking God. And here we see that they're also an important part of confronting your problems. And they're crucial to experiencing victory. I'm convinced that we talk way too much about our problems. We talk way too much about the strength of the enemy. We talk way too much about how bad things are. You hear it everywhere you go. Oh, the economy is awful. Oh, the gas prices are terrible. My job is so stressful. You know, we've got the, all the wrong people in Washington. I've got all these aches and pains. Oh, the coronavirus is coming, and I don't have any toilet paper. And on and on. Now, as I said earlier, that we can't ignore our problems. We can't pretend like they don't exist either. But let me make something abundantly clear. There's a big difference between confronting your problems and complaining about them. Do you know what determines the difference? A heart full of faith and a mouth full of praise. Look at what Jehoshaphat said to the people. Go back to verse 20. Let's look at the whole verse this time in 2 Chronicles 20, 20. It says, in the morning they got up early and they went out to the wilderness of Tekoa. As they were about to go out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in Yahweh your God, and you will be established. Believe in his prophets, and you will succeed. People who do nothing but complain about their problems 
talk as if their problems are the biggest thing in the world. On the other hand, people who are rightly confronting their problems talk as if God is bigger than any situation that they'll ever face. So as you approach the enemies that have aligned against you, you need to stand firm in faith and speak words of praise. But it takes a great deal of courage to do that. Do you have enough courage to say, God, I'm taking steps in this direction as an act of faith, and I'm going to praise you now because you're good, you're mighty, and your word is true, and your love endures forever, and you give strength to your people, and by your power we have victory, and all honor and praise is going to go to you. Do you have the courage to say that? Or is it more comfortable to keep on saying, oh, the economy, oh, the coronavirus, what am I going to do? How am I ever going to get by? In this story, we see the army of Judah was preceded by praise. And as a result, the army never had to enter the fight. God fought the battle for them. And I'm telling you, that if you'll make it your policy to proceed your steps with praise, you won't have to fight your own battles either. In his book, The Cross and the Switchblade, David Wilkerson tells a story about when he was a boy, about being the new kid in town, and on top of that, he was the preacher's kid. And then he found out that the town bully decided that he was going to come after him. He didn't want to fight, but he didn't want to run either. So he prayed about it, and God helped him remember a verse of Scripture. It's in Zechariah 4, 6, which says, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. Wilkerson repeated this verse again and again and again, claiming it as a promise. And when the day of confrontation came and the bully began intimidating, began mocking him, began threatening him, Wilkinson said that he was scared to his core. But he kept repeating the verse. As the bully circled him and as he circled with the bully, he kept saying to himself, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit saith the Lord of hosts. And then Wilkerson said he felt the fear that was inside of him just melt away. And it was replaced by confidence and joy. And while the bully kept up the tough talk, Wilkerson smiled. This guy didn't know what to do. He was used to all the kids in town being afraid of him. And here's this skinny preacher's kid smiling ear to ear at him. Not afraid at all. He says that the bully did finally land a punch. But it was a very weak and hesitant blow. And David never backed down. The bully then turned and took off down the street. The next day, word was all over the school that the preacher's kid beat up the bully. But the truth was that Wilkerson never threw a punch. He won this battle not by might nor by power, but by God's spirit. Wilkerson's story parallels Jehoshaphat's story. And it can be our story too. When we've got armies lined up against us, and bullies coming after us, and problems surrounding us, we can experience God's victory. How? By faith. By faith, you confront your problems face to face. By faith, you begin to take action now. And by faith, you proceed each step with a word of praise. And do you know what you'll discover? That there's power in praise. And there's victory in faith. 
The battle doesn't belong to you. The battle is the Lord's, and he has promised victory. Not by our own might, not by our own power, but by the spirit of the living God.